to succeed in the new global economy, you need to take your game to a new level. The playing field may be flat, but it's not at sea level. The game is moving to a higher plateau. A society must, must invest in the future to improve its competitive muscles. Debates rage on today about austerity, and without question, there is a need for serious and grown-up ways to deal with our financial deficits, both in the public and the private sectors. But we can't cut cost our way to competitiveness. This is not just about technology. We must adopt our policies to nurture and promote an innovation-based economy. Our countries and our cities must be able to tap into global supply chains, talented pools of people and collaborative relationships, and to use them to create things of indigenous value, whether, whether they're products or services. And that will require greater flexibility in how our economies operate through smarter labor and trade regulations. The cities and countries and economies that succeed are going to have clarity on the kind of economy and societal innovation they will do uniquely and better than anyone else. The qualities of their culture and their knowledge base that makes them stand out in the global competitive marketplace for talent and investment. At IBM, we asked ourselves 10 years ago four simple questions when I first came into the job. Very simple, probably will never, have never been, and I can assure you will never be taught by the finest business schools of the world. Why would customers buy from us rather than someone else? Why would somebody invest in us when they have lots of choices of where to put their money? Why would someone work here when there are options and alternatives all over the world in the tech industry? And why would society give us permission to operate within their geographic borders? What the discovery of the Western Hemisphere was to the 15th century, what the discovery of steam power was to the 18th century, what the discovery of electricity was to the 19th century, the explosion of data will be in the 21st century. Its economic and societal value are incalculable. If we seize upon this new resource, I believe future historians will look back at, on this moment not as the so-called new normal of lowered expectation, not as a bifurcation of the world into the new and the old, not as the era of the growing gaps between the have and the have-nots. They'll see this as a dawn of a new golden age of innovation that widely shared economic growth and a chance for truly global citizenship.